here we have a build I titled The Evening Colors, and it's two hot air balloons over a sunset on the sea next to a, a very fancy house or hotel up perched on the cliffs. And inspiration from this build actually came, I was scrolling through Instagram, a few friends I follow, and one of them created this beautiful artwork of some silhouetted hot air balloons over a sunset, and I was like, that's beautiful. And I was really inspired by like the creativity and the beauty of the way she had created that artwork. And I was like, man, I want to build something with hot air balloons soon. I was hoping you'd say that your friend lived in this house and <laughs> posted a photo of it and you were like, I was inspired by that. <laughs> I wish. I would love to visit that house. I'll take a, I'll take a swim in the pool anytime, honestly. No, but um, it actually coincided. So I had that, I, that inspiration on Instagram. And then I also had recently joined a competition on Flickr called Mock Wars. And one of the categories I had chosen to compete in is called Unique Stay. So the, the idea was to create a unique place you'd want to Airbnb or take a vacation to. And I was like, this is my chance to build the hot air balloons with the sunset. And so, so, so I decided, I was like, yeah, I'll build the sunset. So I built the sunset first. It's something I, I've always found beautiful as sunsets. A lot of people do, but I had never built it myself. So I just built that entire back thing first. And then I knew I wanted to do the reflection in the water. And I've seen people try reflections before, but I haven't really seen them do it well, in a sense. So I wanted, I tried doing the, uh, the tiles this time over, over the actual colors instead of blue underneath the tiles. And I think the, the reflection turned out pretty well in this build, uh, uh, or at least to my liking of how I was looking for. Then at that point, I was really happy with how the balloons and the sunset turned out. And then I reread the category description, unique stay. I was like, well, people don't really sleep in hot air balloons. So I was like, I've got to build a house. <laughs> so, so I stayed up really late. And uh, actually, like three nights ago, I finished this build. And I built the entire house in the swimming pool as I was listening to Narnia. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, I stayed up to like 4 a.m. finishing it, but I'm really happy with the results, and I, I honestly think it was one of the most beautiful builds I've built, and I'm really happy with how it turned out, so yeah. Yeah, it's just such a such a beautiful scene, and you can immediately imagine this somewhere like with the cliffside and the hot air balloons out there with that sunset as like a real-life scene somewhere in the world, so it's, you know, you did a great job capturing all those details there, and talk a little, maybe a little bit about the, the house and kind of the, the micro-scale type of techniques you use to create something at that, at that level. Yeah, so the house, micro-scale is one of my favorite uh, scales to work in, so... At this point, I was really low on a lot of my dark tan pieces because they were all in other builds. So I was left with a lot of small parts, which is actually perfect for micro scale. So I have a lot of the dark tan jumpers in there and I knew I wanted to go with a more modern style of house. So I was like, it's gonna need a lot of offsets and then I want those clear windows. So, Because people living in this house are gonna wanna look out over the beautiful sunset, over the cliffs that they've perched their house on. And so that was what inspired me there was different layers and like kind of a square design with the house with those glass windows. And then I threw in the pool as well because uh, if they want to go swimming, I don't think they're going to be diving off that cliff <laughs> into shallow water. <laughs> so I gave them a nice fancy pool. Yeah, that's that's so fantastic. So great job capturing that. And then there's also this uh, second build you have right here, which is very nice as well. I love how you capture just like a sense of even though there's no minifigures in this build, it's just very peaceful. But you get the sense that anytime some people could come along and start playing here. Yeah, exactly. That's actually where I was inspired from is when I was a kid just dreaming and imagining like building forts or running through the woods, playing on a tire swing. I mean, I didn't grow up out in the country, but I always wanted to. So I would make up adventures in my living room, create pillow forts, you know, blanket forts. We would run outside in the yard, do stuff on our wooden play structure in the backyard. And so that's where this really came from is like my playful, imaginative childhood. And I wanted to build that in a kind of an artistic style with these four different squares that were our different sort of seasons where we, you have like sand and then you have dirt rock and then water and yeah I really I love to draw inspirations for my build from things that I that are, mean a lot to me and that are I find beautiful or, or imaginative and I think that's what really inspires me to put a lot of who I am into my builds and that that makes it enjoyable for me. Yeah, that's, that's so fantastic so what are some of your favorite maybe parts techniques or some things you were able to achieve with this build? Yeah, the water is one of the ones that is my favorite parts because it uses those one by two by five bricks in translucent light blue, I think. I haven't seen water used like this because usually people would lay it flat and to get a, a big expanse, but I wanted to use the long way of this to, so it, it would show depth. Like you don't usually see a cutaway of water in this sense. And 
Another thing I discovered is that you can shove little plant pieces on the inside of them when they're used upside down. So you can see some vines even under the water there. And I threw a little, some studs or uh, round tiles in there to simulate bubbles. And so I'm really proud of that technique. And if you shine a little light under it, it really, it brings the, the, uh, the water is just sparkles, which I wasn't able to include a light in this build, but maybe in the future for display purposes, I'll, I'll add that. Also, the trees are something I was I was really f uh, glad to stumble upon. We actually got I got a bunch of these those pieces. It's a one by two slope, and you can st stack them all up. It's like a plate slope, so you can stack them all up in a in a circular pattern, and it kind of gives that minimalistic tree look. Like, sure, those trees aren't to scale maybe with a minifigure or the rest of the build, but it is an artistic interpretation, and I think it works well, especially with the owl sitting next to it. Yeah, That's a wonderful little scene, so thank you. Yes, thank you.